Pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 23rd day of February in 2022, and it's a nice windy day here in Dangriga, even though in my office where I am, it is a bit warm this morning. I do pray you are having a blessed and beautiful morning thus far, and that indeed we will have a wonderful moment of prayer together. This morning, we're going to start things off with one entitled, All Earth is Waiting. Let's have a listen.
that lovely wonder entitled All Earth is Waiting. And indeed, all the earth is waiting for the glory of the Lord. Let's continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today, the 23rd day of February in 2022. And we could make that happen in three, two, and one. There we go. <laughs> I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Words from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 2. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle Du Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100. It can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we would have committed that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps would have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 119, reading from verses 145 through to verse 176, and leading us in the psalm for this morning is Miss Haley Bailey. Let's have a listen. I call with my whole heart, Answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. I call to you, O oh, that you would save me. I will keep your decrees. Early in the morning, I cry out to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open in the night watches, that I may meditate upon your promise. Hear my voice, O Lord. According to your loving kindness, according to your judgments, give me life. They draw near who in malice persecute me. They are very far from your law. You, O oh Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your decrees that you have established them forever. 
Behold my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Deliverance is far from the wicked, for they do not study your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Preserve my life according to your judgments. There are many who persecute and oppress me. Yet I have not swerved from your decrees. I look with loathing at the faithless, for they have not kept your word. See how I love your commandments? O Lord, in your mercy, preserve me. The heart of your word is truth. All your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stand in awe of your word. I am as glad because of your promise as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law is my love. Seven times a day do I praise you, because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your laws. For them, there is no stumbling block. I have hoped for your salvation, O Lord, and have fulfilled your commandments. I have kept your decrees, and I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your promise for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live, and I will praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. Search for your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We want to thank Mr. Fenton Ross Jr. and Miss Haley Bailey for leading us in Psalm 119, verses 145 through to 176. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, and deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, and by night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verses 1 through to 19. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verses 1 through to 19. 
My child, if you have given your pledge to your neighbor, if you have bound yourself to another, you are snared by the utterance of your lips, caught by the words of your mouth. So do this, my child, and save yourself, for you have come into your neighbor's power. Go, hurry, and plead with your neighbor. Give your eyes no sleep and your eyelids no slumber. Save yourself like a gazelle from the hunter, like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, you lazy bone. Consider its ways and be wise. Without having any chief or officer or ruler, it prepares its food in summer and gathers its sustenance in harvest. How long will you lie there, O lazy bones? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a rubber, and want like an armed warrior. A scoundrel and a villain goes around with crooked speech, winking the eye, shuffling the feet, pointing the fingers, with perverted mind, devising evil, continually sowing discord. On such a one, calamity will descend suddenly. In a moment, damage beyond repair. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devise wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in a family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A continuation of the wisdom passed on from one generation to another is what our meditation is for this morning from the book of Proverbs. And if you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, this is a section of Proverbs that sits very strongly with me. And there we are. This one is, of course, the writing of Solomon continuing on to be a message or a warning from Solomon to his sons to come. And this one is wisdom to a son on depth and how work works, and sin and seduction. And it explains that foolishness is taking on other people's debt. Taking debt of friends or stranger is foolishness. And it goes to say, yes, my child, if you have given your pledge to your neighbor, if you have bound yourself to another, you are snared by the utterance of your lips so if you become surety for your friends solomon warns his son against guaranteeing the debts of others whether they are a friend or a stranger the promise to pay the debt of a friend or stranger if they fail to pay is putting yourself in a dangerous spot and what comes to my mind is bail and surety in our society today it wasn't really like loaning someone money right it's not exactly like co-signing a loan in, in modern financial terms. It's more like guaranteeing someone an open line of credit. Yes? And guaranteeing someone an open line of credit, um, I have seen many businesses fall to that. Yes? And it's interesting because neighborhood grocery stores. Stay with me for a second here. You remember back in the day when grocery stores and shops corner stores used to be locally owned i dare you to find a thriving locally owned grocery store in your society almost every single grocery store today is owned by a foreigner and why foreigners come in they open grocery stores and they do not offer a line of credit local grocery stores because you know Mr. Caddy from around the corner. Yes? You ask him for a line of credit and Mr. Caddy would have a notebook with the names of families 
in there and he would give credit. And then you're quick to come to get and write on credit, but you're slow to come and pay the bill. And unless you pay the bill, there is no turnover money for new groceries to come. But you can't do that at the foreign-owned shop. You can't go there and get a line of credit. Anything you want off that shelf, you best have the money for it in your hand. An advantage was taken of the small local business owners to the point that they ran them in the ground. And Solomon is telling his son, this is, this is more about promising your friends an open line of credit, trusting that they will come. Because what you are doing is you're setting yourself up for failure. Lending money is one thing. Co-signing a loan is one thing. Guaranteeing an open line of credit to people who you trust to come back, who in the end become enemies with you for the kindness that you have shown is one thing. If you pledge yourself on behalf of another, taking on his burden, placing it on your own shoulder, you run the risk of feeling the weight of a responsibility that might end up crippling you even though it is not yours. The promise to pay the debt of another is to put yourself in a trap. It is a promise made with the words of your mouth, but that will affect your livelihood, your wallet, or your purse. And what to do if you have taken the debt of another? In verse 3 to 5, Solomon tells his son, So do this. Save yourself from, you know, for you have come into your neighbor's power. Go hurriedly and plead with your neighbor. Give your eyes no sleep and your eyelid no slumber. Save yourself like a gazelle from a hunter, you know, like a bird from its fowler. Deliver yourself, Solomon is saying. Yes, he counsels his son that if he did make himself responsible for the death of another person, he should do all he could to deliver himself. Humble yourself and plead to be released from your promise. Go back and tell him, you know what, I make a mistake, I can't handle it. Yes, humbling yourself means going and earnestly imploring the patience and the clemency of he who you indebted yourself to. Yes? And I mean, a gazelle from its from the hand of a hunter is, I mean, think about it. A deer will do anything to escape a hunter. And Solomon tries to communicate the urgency of this matter to his son. To escape this responsibility from dealing with the debt of others. Becoming surety is, is folly because surety makes promises for future that you can't control. And you have handed yourself over into the hands of the debtor. And you're at the mercy. Yes. In the hands of the creditor. And that's not a good place to be. I stand surety for you. Hoping that you will pay your debt. And if you don't then I have to pay it. And so I'm at the mercy of two people. I'm at the mercy of the person who's supposed to pay their bill. And I'm at the mercy of the person who's supposed to collect. So in that situation, the person in the worst condition, me, I'm at the mercy of two people. And Solomon is explaining to his son a message that we should consider. Nothing is wrong with assisting people. And the Bible tells us, loan not expecting to have in return. Sunday's gospel reading says to us, you know what? If someone comes and tries to take your shirt, Give them your coat as well. And don't give to people that you know could pay you back. Give to people and expect nothing in return. That is what the gospel from Sunday said to us. Yes? But giving of one's free will not expecting in return is different from being a surety for somebody trusting that they will live up to their responsibility and not put you in a negative place. And that can become tricky. I once stood surety for somebody and I ended up having to pay hundreds of dollars. Ask me if I will do that again. I can't afford to. I mean, I simply can't afford to. But Solomon explains, yes? Make sure that you sleep with your own eyes. Make sure you do everything to get yourself out of this situation. More than that. Go to the ant and look at how the ant thrive. And he shifts then to the honor of hard work. 
using the ant as an example. And I don't know if you have had time on your hands or um, if you're just um, kind of not right like me. I love watching ants work. I do. And clearly Solomon had taken the time to look at ants working as well. How they move in a line. How they briefly stop to communicate with each other. How five little ants could move half a slice of bread. Things that weigh so much more than them. How they pull together their strength. How they are constantly moving and making things done. And Solomon spoke wisdom to one who was lazy. Essentially a lazy man or a lazy woman. That they could learn from the ant. An insect proverbal for hard work. Yes. And the book of Proverbs speaks a lot about the value of hard work. And for good reason. The difference between success and failure. The difference between potential disappointment or fulfillment. Is often hard work. And no insect is more laborious. Not even the bee itself. No insect is more laborious than that of the ant. None. And Solomon says, they have no chief or no officer, but they still work to gather food in the summer, sustenance in the harvest. But you, you who have people over you to tell you what to do, you who have captains, overseer, and rulers, you want to sit there and do nothing. The ant work hard when the work, there is work to be done. In the summer and in the harvest, they get the work done. It means that the ant gives a good lesson in their ways and their wisdom. Yes? Do while you can do because there'll be a day when you can't. And it's a warning to lazy people. Yeah? How long will you slumber? Yeah? How long will you lie there, oh lazy bones? And I remember my grandfather, Hemin Price. And grandpa would tell the boys... He would call them lazy bones. The boys were lazy bones. And me, believe it or not, with all my chunky cheeks now, I used to be bag of bones because I had no skin. I loved no flesh. I was skin and bones when I was growing up. Yes? And he would always call the boys, come you lazy bones. And he was warning them against being lazy. He was letting them know that a fair day's work deserves a fair day's wages but a fair day's work means you can't sit there. Hmm? And he would take the boys into the backyard and have them chop around the trees to keep it clean. And then after that, their reward was pick any of the fruits because my grandparents' yard used to be full of kaimito or, or star apple as they were called. We had guavas, we had cashew, we had plum, we had hog plum, we had an abundance. We didn't know we were poor. Because we ate everything that came from our backyard and including the chickens, the eggs that they laid and the turkeys that were in the yard. We didn't know we were poor until IMF come and tell us that having these things but not having financial plata resources meant that we were poor. <laughs> and the boys would have to work in the yard and gain their reward. And what? The girls, we would gather up the golden plums, wash them peel them, bag them off. My grandmother would mix up um, salt and grounded pepper and we would sprinkle that in the bag of golden plums and that's what we would take around the neighborhood to sell. As a child going to primary school, my grandmother would make fudge or tableta and we would take a container with fudge or tableta to school to sell and the money would come home to buy a piece of well, at that time, it would be pork meat or a piece of beef because we would cut chicken from the backyard and stew pork with stew beans and corn tortilla from across the street. That was a big thing. And you felt a sense of pride in knowing that you selling your six, seven bag of golden plum or guava or, um, um, well, we have sapra and crabu in the yard as well. But you had to get up and pick these things, wash them, clean them properly, bag them off, make them presentable, you know. And yes, I'd get in trouble because I would steal a five cents and use the five cents to buy two max batch of Smarties and two match box of Pepitos because you'd sell then at that point the match box was the measurement for the sale. 
yeah, I'm not as young as I look. But that was the life. And I could remember stealing this true, um, what you call it thing? This true super. Because I would take a super and eat the super while supposedly going to sell. Yes? <laughs> but the message was that if you wanted to eat, you had to contribute. And contributing did not was not limited by your age or your size. The warning was against being lazy. The warning was ag exactly what Solomon was saying. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And guess what? Poverty will come upon you. But instead, what you have to do is you have to train your children to remember that it is necessary in order to work for that which you want. I always tell people, someone comes to me and says, Rev, please give me $5. And my first thing to them was, okay, let me see what work I can give you in order that you can earn $5. Because my $5, I have to work for it. And you have to be willing to do something because a fair day's labor deserves a fair day's wage. If you offer me to wash my car, I will give you the $15, $20 for washing it. But to come to me and tell me, give, when you have offered nothing in return, doesn't sit well with me. And Solomon was saying, poverty will come upon you like a rubber and want will come upon you like an armed warrior if you sit there and think that the world will give you handout for free. And it breaks my heart that we live in a society of persons that think that they are entitled to everything without doing anything. That doesn't work. And it breeds a sense of entitlement in persons. And then what happens? Solomon tells us, a scoundrel and a villain goes around with crooked speech, winking the eye and shuffling the feet pointing the finger with perverted mind, devising evil, continually sowing discord. And I watch it. And I have tourists that come right around the river's edge where I live here, trying to catch boats to go out. And I always see a couple of persons in our community going after them to try to convince them, well, let me carry your bag for you is one thing. That's one thing. But... Come, let me show you this. Yeah, I could get you to here and here and all kinds of words to manipulate and, and change the situation that they could swindle somebody out of $2. And it breaks my heart that that is what the guests will come in contact with and think that that is who we are when it is not. And a handful of lying tongues making it difficult for an entire society. But what? Solomon says it. On such a one, calamity will descend suddenly. And in a moment, damage beyond repair. Anything gained in dishonesty does not last for long. I'll say it again. Anything gained in dishonesty does not last for long. The lazy man will find that poverty and need comes upon him quickly, but departs very slowly because he does nothing. The sluggard loves to procrastinate and think that things can always be done later, but later never comes. The hard worker can look forward to later. For the lazy man, it will come like a prowler, and when it comes, it will be their poverty. Not one imposed by circumstance or misfortune, but one imposed, self-inflicted through their own laziness. And it's interesting because if that was the discussion that Solomon was having with his son then, why are we still in the same situation now? Why have we not learned? And why have we overlooked the destiny of a wicked man? Solomon moved from the idea of a lazy person to a worthless and wicked man. And these sinful characteristics are often related and combined. And one of the main features of 
a worthless and wicked person, their manner of life is the corruption of their speech. Perverse mouth, which mainly has ideas of crooked or corruption. You know? Morally perverse. What they say is never straight, honest, and right to the point. Hmm? The winking of an eye. Yes? The twitching of the feet. Shady characters. Yeah. <laughs> and what do they do? They stir evil and discord. But Solomon did not directly attribute, yes, he didn't directly attribute calamity as a judgment of God. He implies it. Yes, God knows how to set the cynical, crooked speaking man or woman in their deserved place. And then he goes on to list these seven things. And if you have a pen, write it down. Write it down if you have a pen. Because it's important to know these things. Why? Important to know these things that we can stay clear of them. Mm -hmm. And I love reading it. It says, seven things that the Lord hates. Six things the Lord hates. Seven that he, you know, that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes. Eyes that look down on people. Hmm? A lying tongue, a tongue that doesn't say the truth. Hands that shed innocent blood. Yes, so that's haughty eyes, lying tongue, hand that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that hurry to run to evil. A lying witness who testifies falsely. And one who creates discord in a family seven things that the lord despises and it gives us a good example of us to check ourselves am i looking down on people thinking i am better than them do i go around telling lies in order to gain whatever it is i'm trying to gain have i shed innocent blood you know am i in my heart plotting and scheming and devising wicked plans are my feet quick to follow those who are willing to do evil or to lead others into doing evil? Am I one who testifies falsely? Yes, saying that I saw when I didn't saw putting other people in trouble. Or am I the one who creates tension by spreading rumors and gossip and lies to create problems within families? Who am I? And let me tell you something. In the heights of his wickedness, when they seem to be benefiting from it, a dishonest person looks like they're enjoying the spoils. But that enjoyment does not last. And even if they are not judged in this life, they will be judged in the next. And the judgment in the next, in my mind, is far scarier than the judgment now. And interestingly enough, interestingly enough, the lazy sluggard individual with perverse mind and thinking is not concerned about what happens in the afterlife. They are looking only for now. I would much rather live a humble life of struggle in this world now. And enjoy the benefits of a life to come. Than to enjoy the benefits of a life now. But forfeit the joys of eternal glory. But that's just me. <laughs> the question is. Which do you prefer? And what are you willing to do? In order to secure it. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages today, we use Suffrage C, which is on page 44 of our Books of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour it into our hearts, your greatest gift, which is love the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit, that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is the Reverend Travis Fernander and Mrs. Sheena Mears Granville. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that indeed God's blessings will be upon you for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verolyn, and Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa. Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Louise. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Ilona, Miss Fiona, and Miss Catherine. We remember and pray for Miss Betty, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Laverne, Miss Caroline and Miss Molly. 
We remember and pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Leolin, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Joyce, Miss Sheila, and Miss Greta. We pray for Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delverine, Miss Daphne, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Kim, Miss Dominic, Miss Pat, Miss Teresa, Miss Mona, Miss Derla, and Miss Gilda. We continue to pray for the following of our brothers. Remembering in our prayers, Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenwick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Wayne. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, and Father Hardy. We remember and pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerris, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Father Constancio. We remember and pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Russell, Mr. Mark, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Kent, and Mr. Ian. In our prayers this morning, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember in our prayers the family of Mr. John Callis, the family of Miss Karina Andrews, the family of Mr. Rob Lewis, the family of Miss Juanita Sanchez, the family of Mr. Felix Melendres. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, praying for God's comfort and peace to be upon them during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Elton, Arian, Kai, Ria, Brittany, and Ashley. We remember our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, Charles, Barry, Gavin, Sam, Keishan, and Alvin. We continue in our prayers to pray for the protection and the enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We continue to remember and pray for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Joseph, Sosa, Eck, Lawrence, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, and Nurse Julie. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19, persons in the various isolation wards, persons who man these isolation wards, those who are in isolation at home, those who for fear of stigma have not revealed their conditions, those who were infected by persons who knew they were ill but did nothing to protect others. We pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine for this disease. We pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those who would have lost employment, those whose salaries would have been reduced, those who still are struggling to make ends meet. We continue to remember the most vulnerable in our society, remembering the poor, the elderly, the needy, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, all branches of our military. We pray for the government and persons in positions of public trust and authority. We remember and pray for our churches, the church leadership, the private sector, and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. We pray for all those personnel who do individual counseling, those who are there to listen to the cause of others. We continue to remember and pray for the international community and those most severely affected by this pandemic. Praying as well 
for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster and for those who are recovering from natural disasters. For the silent prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet the new day in the presence of Almighty God and in your presence as well. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Today is Wednesday, so following this broadcast, there is noonday prayers at midday, followed by children's Bible minutes at 2.30, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. I invite you to join me for any or all of these services as you are able, and if not, you can always catch the repeat on any of our Facebook channels or, yes, channels as well. Outside of that, I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to wrap things up this morning with one entitled, where is it now? This one is entitled, Awake, Awake, Fling Off the Night. And you know, when I think about flinging off the night, I think about flinging off the cloak of darkness that night brings and listening to the teachings of Solomon to his son. Flinging off the cloak of darkness is more than just about the physical night and the dawning of the day. It can mean turning away from all that keeps us bounded in sin and seeking the light of Christ. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. Awake, awake, we go. Oh,